Hey guys, what's going on? Quick little video about uh, Grand Theft Auto, the definitive edition, the trilogy, my opinion on it. So I really don't see why people are getting excited. It's not to say, of course, that they shouldn't be excited. It's just that I'm very confused as to how anybody could be blown out of the water. And they're not blown out of the water, but how anybody could really think that this is going to be something that blows you out of the water. After seeing Grand Theft Auto V, the expanded and enhanced trailer, which has like a 15% approval rating or something, uh, I don't even um, I don't, I don't even think it was that high at one time. It may be lower. I don't know. But the point is, for a Rockstar Games video to be disliked that heavily is a very, very frightening concept. You know, I've been playing a lot of Halo, the Master Chief Collection recently. I think that that is the fundamental difference between a company, a studio, creators, uh, developers, whatever you want to call them. The fundamental difference between supporting a game and milking a game. They constantly release new armor. They constantly release new season updates. Granted, they have a new game coming out soon. It's probably pretty good for marketing, but the Master Chief Collection's been out for six years now. You know... They're, they don't need to do this. They're still updating Halo 3 that came out in 2014. They just added a custom game browser lobby. Um, custom game lobby browser? Is that what you want to call it? Um, <clears throat> for a 14-year-old game, they're still adding new maps, new armor. And armor. What the hell kind of an accent was that? And you look at this and you say to yourself, you know, this is what a lot of these game studios should be doing. Rockstar should be doing this. It should be a renaissance period of older games. It should be this return to the old. Why should we do that? Because of all the shortages. Look at how hard it is to get your hands on a graphics card. How expensive they are. Nobody can afford this shit, okay? Uh, well, maybe some people can, but I don't think most people can truly afford it comfortably. Even consoles are expensive, so maybe that sort of invalidates my point. But this would be such a brilliant time to capitalize on the fact that we're having a little bit of trouble progressing, whether it be financially or technologically, forward in the video game world in terms of like the, the consumer end. So let's take a little break. Let's revisit the classics that we love, that are optimized, like Halo, like Grand Theft Auto, Let's make a killer amount of money on them. Not, not just that, build an incredibly, I, I'm wording this wrong, but build an even larger fan base for people who have yet to be introduced to the classics and then release Grand Theft Auto 6. That's what I think they're doing with, you know, Halo Infinite. People who have never played that before, if they, if they hop on Halo 3, if they're hopping on all these old games that came out 14 years ago that are still being updated, of course they're going to hop on Halo. Uh, the new one. They're gonna say, yeah, dude, these developers kick ass. The these guys are really... These guys are in it for the long haul. And I think all the updates are free as well. So, Grand Theft Auto, I would love to see multiplayer clients put in to San Andreas, at the very least. Is it a crazy thing to ask for? Yes and no. The reason why I say no is because... Um, People have had multi... What was it called? Multi-theft auto for San Andreas? They have had that forever. I think I actually remember playing that in like 2008 or something, where you could be playing on GTA San Andreas multiplayer on PC. Um, it was just like 5M. Not just that. And of course, that was, a, that was a custom thing. That was someone that was not part of Rockstar making it. Not just that. If the GTA 5 trailer came out in 2011 and it released in 2013, let's just say that they started working on it, uh, GTA 6, maybe a couple years later. That That's what everybody's mind is thinking, by the way. Everyone thinks right now that Grand Theft Auto 6 has been being worked on for the past eight, seven, six years. You know... On one hand, you'll believe that Grand Theft Auto can actually be worked on for that long. That Rockstar is going to re release this incredible groundbreaking masterpiece of GTA 6, which they probably will. So that's all believable. But then when you say, could they add a multiplayer client to a very old game that someone's already done? Nah, that's crazy. It, it, 
it, it's so strange because you could somehow, I'm sure they could do it with the amount of money that they've made. It would actually be rather condescending and undermining to believe that they couldn't do it. I, I sound very cynical and of course, I want to be surprised. If they come out with something that is so good, I will not criticize it at all. Why would you? The only reason why we're being critical now is because we want something uh, that really buys us some more time. GTA 4, personal favorite of mine, watching old gameplay footage of that, I never realized how special that was until you see, oh, there are no flying motorcycles. I know that's a very generic complaint, but there's a reason why it's generic or uh, there's a reason why it's overused is because people hate them. There were no flying cars. Even jets kind of seem over the top when you're watching how great the GTA 4 uh, gameplay is. And you're looking at people having these natural firefights. They're just blowing each other's brains out without lock-on missiles, <laughs> without anything crazy, without drones. What was the most overpowered thing back in GTA 4? It was probably like the APC tank or something. And there was also that one apartment building that you could run into. And I remember people chasing me to the top before you jumped off. And uh, yeah, looking at that game, there was so much less that we had in Grand Theft Auto 5. And it's nice that we can choose from those two. But if you were to bring that back, my god, people would love that. There, there have to be people out there that are younger. There just have to be. Has to be, is the word. Um, that have never played Grand Theft Auto 4 before. Uh, that, that will jump on that and say, whoa, you know, this is really good. I'm sure it's happened with the, the Master Chief Collection and Halo. I'm sure people have jumped on that and said, you know, I wasn't a, wasn't a Halo guy before this, but I'm definitely going to buy Infinite now. So... I won't get into any more hypotheticals on whether or not we'll have new game types or whether or not we'll be able to change this or that or characters or will they give us new weapons because deep down, <laughs> I sound, like, sound like I'm speaking to a therapist, deep down I, I know it won't happen. I hope it will, but I, I, I don't think it will. Let me know what you think. Uh, sorry for that incoherent rambling. I'm not that educated on this stuff. I just happen to like video games. And of course, the main selling point that I think would really, really drive it home is the fact that the world is in a bad area right now. Not to, not to look at this from too much of like a macrocosm-like standpoint. Um, not to get too philosophical over it. But things are expensive. There are shortages everywhere. They're inescapable. I'm sure you must have gone into a store recently and seen that you can't buy a product that you normally buy. It's probably even worse with technology. So in a time where things are expensive and they're hard to acquire, why not use this as a period, as like a little break, to go back to the things that we once loved, just with some better, you know, with some better graphics. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed it. Now that I see I'm almost approaching the 10 minute mark, um, is there anything left to say? No, because the videos aren't monetized. It doesn't matter.